This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to be going over how to install Clipper on a Tronc C X5SA printer. Um, the, the steps are a little weird for this one, and it took me a while to figure out how to do it. I found a couple tutorials online. Of course, nothing's exactly right. Um, so I'm just going to go through with you uh, the process I did. And so you can figure it out. And if you have any questions, please post them um, or send me, send me an email. I, I don't mind answering questions or trying to help somebody through a problem. Uh, so hopefully you can uh, you'll find this video helpful and you can figure things out. And so let's go ahead and get started. This is Future Mike. Um, I just wanted to make note that once I went through, got everything installed, I found that the USB port on my trunks at least is crappy and the connection keeps failing. So now I've already said I'm gonna upgrade to a new board on this printer, so it doesn't really matter to me. But you might wanna be careful because your mileage may vary with this tutorial, particularly if your uh, USB port doesn't work right like mine. And I believe from all I've read that Tronxy does have some quality control issues. So that's just my update, hopefully that helps. First thing I want to mention here is uh, just some notes about the board that's on the Tronxy by default. I've gone to the support page for Tronxy, and if you look, you can't download Marvin. You have to actually email them and ask them with firmware, and God knows how long it takes for them to get back. I really don't like this. I don't like the fact that I can't just download the firmware and reflash. That's one of the reasons why I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to Clipper. I think that offers me better options anyway, but it really bothers me that I can't reflash easily. So it's worth noting here that reflashing to your old firmware is going to be a problem. You're going to have to email support to get a copy of the firmware that was on your machine. So before you start, just be aware, getting the old firmware back could be problematic. I'm sure there's places online that have it, but I haven't dug too deep into that. I'm just mentioning it so you know what's going on and you're also aware that there is this problem. As you can see from the support page, they're listing two different boards for the printer. Um, a main board 103 and a main board 446. The main board 103 requires what's called a CBD file to update. So rather than a bin, you're using a CBD. Now I found this gist on GitHub that has the steps, including the already made updated .cd, .cbd file that you can put in Flash. Um, now, in the case of the 446 board, you can use traditional bin, but it needs to be in a certain folder and it needs to be named a certain way. And this is what my printer is. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the steps on how to put your, your bin together, and then go ahead and name it appropriately, what folder to put it in, and then flash it. Forgot to mention that if you want to check which board you have in your machine, you're going to go to the system menu on the screen, and then click information, and that should list what board you're using. And as I mentioned, I'm using the 446 board. If you followed some of my previous videos, you'll know that I use the Clipper install and update helper to uh, install Clipper and set it all up. So I've gone ahead and SSH'd into my desktop that my printer is hooked up to, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run the tool. And it's asking me to update, so I'll go ahead and update, and run it again. So first thing I wanna do is just make sure everything's up to date. So I'll select two, and let it load. Right now everything looks good. And so I'm going to go over to advanced, which is number four, and then I'm going to select number two, build. And so this is going to help me build the clipper.bin file I need to install. So I'm going to select number two. And the first thing I'm going to do is check and enable the low level configuration options. I'm going to select my architecture as STM32. Then I'm going to select my processor model as the STM. STM32F446 board. 
I'm going to set my bootloader to 64K, and I'll warn you that that's not the default option, so you do need to make sure you change this. And then you want to go down here to communication interface and make sure you select a US Art 1 PA10 slash PA9. And once you've done that, in my in the update helper, I can hit Q and it goes ahead and generates the clipper file for me. So the clipper file is now generated in the out folder and I'll use Cyberduck log in and grab that file. Okay, with Cyberduck open, I'm going to go ahead and connect my machine. The first thing I want to do is change this to SFTP. And I've typed in my server, my username, and my password, and I'm going to hit connect. I'm going to hit allow. And that logs me onto my machine. I need to navigate to the clipper folder. And if you remember, the screen said out. So we're going to do the out folder. I'm going to select the clipper.bin and just click download. We notice over here on the left of my screen, it's downloaded the clipper.bin into my desktop. So now that I have that, I can proceed to setting up my SD card so I can flash this onto my printer. I went ahead and opened up File Explorer, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to my SD card. So it's empty. I'm going to right click and create a folder called Update, and that's all lowercase. I'm going to go into the Update folder and then drag the clipper.bin file into there. And then I have to go ahead and rename the clipper.bin file. So, so to rename this file, all we're going to do is rename. And I'm going to name it fmw underscore x5sa.bin. So that should be correct because that's the my model printer. Now I believe on some of the other printers, you'll need to add underscore pro or underscore 400 or the name of your printer. I can't tell you that for sure because of course I don't have those printers. I've gone ahead and renamed this file. So I'm going to eject the SD card and then go ahead over to my printer. I've gone ahead and switched off the lights in my office so you could see the screen a little bit better. So with my printer off, I'm going to go ahead and insert the SD card. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip the printer on. Now it's hard to see here because of the glare, but at the very bottom of the screen here, it'll say burn fmw underscore 5sa.bin. There'll be a green line. Once that green line's all the way across, it's pretty much done flashing. And what I've found is I'll still let it sit for about 30 seconds or so. And then go ahead and shut the printer off and then reboot it. And there's also a way to tell whether the file's actually been flashed or not. And I'll show you that. We'll move back over to my computer and I'll show you that as well. So I'm going to turn the printer off. And again, I apologize for the glare. Unfortunately, the screen's white um, when it boots up. So I'm going to reboot the printer. And what it'll do is it'll basically be stuck on the intro screen saying initializing. And once it does that, the screen's no longer working, but Clipper is installed successfully. So let's go ahead and look at Explorer, File Explorer, and just make sure it flashed. So I've opened up the SD card, and you'll notice that my update folder has now been renamed underscore update all in caps. That means it's flashed successfully. So let's go ahead and just load in a Clipper configuration and see if everything's working appropriately. So once I have Clipper flashed, I found this reference online. Um, it's a printer.config for an F446 board. It appears to be working well for me. So I've gone ahead and cut and paste that into my printer.config for this printer. Now I also found that the serial for the MCU remains the same. So I don't have to look up a new serial or type in any commands. I can just cut and paste as is. In my case, I went ahead and added the includes for fluid and the includes for main sale. So I just hit save and restart. 
and hopefully in a minute that will connect. So it's going ahead and connect to my printer. That's good. Now, the next thing I'll do is just go over the dashboard and let me show you this working in action. I've switched over to a combo view here where you can see both the dashboard and the printer. I'm going to hit update all. And you'll notice that the printer, I'm sorry, not update all, home all. You'll notice that the printer is actually completing a home form, home sequence right now. And everything appears to be working. Now, I haven't totally configured Clipper yet for this printer, but that um, sample printer.config file I found seems to be working really well. So, anyway, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. Hopefully, you found this video helpful and you'll find it useful if you want to convert your Tronc C X5SA printer over to Clipper. In my case, in a future video, I'm going to be converting this printer and putting in a Big Tree Tech Octopus, Octopus board. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Hope you have a good day. Thanks. Bye.